What if Darth Riven trained Palpatine? Let's start the story around 65 BBY on Naboo. Sheev Palpatine, the young 17 year old boy from Naboo, grew up in the noble city of Theed, a part of the high class family, the Palpatines. The boy always thought he was special, better than those around him, and born to lead. When he was young, he adopted the hobby of collecting Sith artifacts and memorabilia, using the black market to find and buy these dark side relics with his family's fortune. At this time in the galaxy, the Sith are a mere myth, having not been seen for over 1000 years. But it's this mystery and legendary nature that attracts a young Palpatine. One day, he's contacted by a seller who has found an interesting item, a Sith holocron. When Palpatine hears of this, he was extremely excited. He's read about Sith holocrons, but never managed to get one for himself. It was his lucky day, and he buys the Sith holocron. He sets it up on his desk, and stares at it deeply. He tries to use his hands to twist it open, but it doesn't budge. He's read that these are meant to contain knowledge, and that they're sort of a library, but begins thinking that this might not be the case, and that he's been sold a fake. His father, Consigna Palpatine, bursts into the room, and begins berating Sheev about how he didn't show up for his politics class that day. They have a back and forth, which ends with his father slapping Sheev across the face, something he's never done before. Palpatine just lost it, using mere instinct. He picks his father up with the force, squeezing his windpipe with all his might until he exhaled his last breath. He drops his father to the floor, dead. His relationship with his dad has always been poor, but in recent years it's only beginning worse, and now it's over. He looks up to see the corners of the holocron have shifted, and have moved from their original position. The top has opened, and he hears a voice speak to him. I can feel your anger, young one. Use it. It gives you power. Palpatine looks at the holocron, too stunned as the inanimate object has begun speaking to him. He asks the holocron who he is. Sith Lord Darth Riven. I died over 3000 years ago, but my consciousness has been preserved in this holocron to teach the next generation of Sith. Have you come to learn? I have. Very well then. I sense your potential. I will teach you the ways of the Sith, but I warn you, it will not be easy. Palpatine's training in the Force begins under the tutelage of Darth Revan. He knows it will be a long and grueling journey, but he feels as if he's been waiting his entire life for this. Revan starts by taking Palpatine through the basics, learning to harness his emotions and turn it into his strength, followed by basic Force movements including telekinesis. Riven was a master of lightsaber combat, and bestowed his wisdom onto Palpatine, who absorbed all of the Sith Master's knowledge. He practiced ruthlessly against various training droids, and sometimes hunted down highly skilled opponents, until he mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat. Palpatine's connection to the Force surprised even Riven's ghost, who witnessed Palpatine absorb knowledge like no other. Master Sith technique after technique, as well as make improvements to some of them. He was a born alchemist, a master of Sith magic, and accompanied by his mastery of lightsaber combat, he was one of the most skilled warriors at the present time in the galaxy. Riven took Palpatine all across the galaxy, teaching him the history of the Sith, their pitfalls, and why he's going to be different. After 13 long and grueling years, his training is complete. During this time, Palpatine continued his double life as a higher class citizen on Naboo, and completed his studies at the Theed University in politics and intergalactic relations. Palpatine always thought he was born to lead, and rule over others, and if the Sith were to ever rule the galaxy, he would have to venture deeper into politics. But he decides to build up his reputation a little at a time. In the year 52 BBY, when Palpatine is 30 years old, King Tapalo's term is over, and Palpatine decides to run for the position as king. He uses his status as a member of a high class family to connect with high profile contacts and government officials, including the current senator, Vidar Kim, to gain support for his campaign. He was charming, charismatic, and stoic, and used this to become elected as the King of Naboo. As King, he made changes to Naboo that were quite controversial, but ultimately turned out the best for the planet. He had to make a statement that he wasn't going to be a passive ruler. He opened up Naboo to the wider galaxy, switching from their isolationist stance to engage in active trade and commerce with other systems and people. This was a success, and Naboo's economy skyrocketed 
the most it had in hundreds of years. Let's switch to the other Sith in the galaxy at the time. 15 years prior, Darth Plagueis killed his master, Darth Tenebris, and took on the mantle as Dark Lord of the Sith. Plagueis wasn't satisfied with any of the Force sensitives he's encountered in these 15 years, including the ones his master trained behind his back and hadn't taken apprentice during this time. However, he was unaware of Palpatine on Naboo, who had completed his training in the dark side and whose strength almost rivaled his own. Four years down the line, Palpatine had completed his two two-year terms as King of Naboo. But the following king appointed Palpatine to become the Senator of Naboo, following Vidar Kim stepping down from the position. Meanwhile, Plagueis under his identity of Hago Damask, attends a conference on Sereno to discuss the implementation of a new trade route and hyperspace lanes in the Outer Rim. At this conference were Jedi Masters Jocasta Nu, Dooku, Sifo Diaz, and Padawan Qui-Gon Jinn. Plagueis never misses any opportunity to meet with Jedi and talks to them a lot during this conference. They have an entire discussion about how the unrest in the Outer Rim is rising and Plagueis brings up his concerns that it could lead to a galactic war. Dooku tells Plagueis that he's not alone in this thinking and he's also been wondering this for a while now. The discussion goes on further but Plagueis makes some key conclusions. He decides then and there that Dooku will be his next apprentice. He has become an increasingly louder voice against the corruption in the Senate and is offside with the Jedi Council. He's on his way to the dark side and Plagueis will simply guide him. But during the conversation with Sifo Diaz, Plagueis realized something. He realized how self-righteous the Jedi are and decides to use this in his plans. He will change his plans to make the Jedi fight alongside an army that will turn on them instead of fighting them with an army itself. But during the meeting, he made a good impression on Dooku and offered for the Jedi to contact him if he needed anything. Dooku did soon after, and together they would discuss the state of the galaxy, the role the Jedi and Senate played, and how neither are working to fix the problem. He tries to lure Dooku away from the Jedi, who tells Plagueis that he's become disillusioned with the Jedi's ways and no longer sees them as the guardians of peace in the galaxy and can no longer stand aside and do nothing. Plagueis asks him what he'll do next and whether he'll seek out the Sith who work against the Jedi. Dooku tells him he would if he believed it for the good of the galaxy. Dooku leaves the order that day and works closely with Plagueis, discussing how they can fix the galaxy, who eventually reveals himself as a Sith Lord. Dooku was shocked by this, but ultimately agreed to become his apprentice, as he believed Plagueis was acting in the best interests of the galaxy. The year is 48 BBY, and Plagueis has carefully manipulated recent events. Dooku regained his title as Count on Sereno and became the senator for the planet. During the next couple of years, both Dooku and Palpatine are seen as the rising stars in the senate, but Plagueis didn't see Palpatine as a problem yet. He's still unaware of his power in the force, as Palpatine learned to conceal his presence from the Jedi and Sith from Darth Revan. Everything is going well for Palpatine. He's maneuvered his way in the senate at such a young age, and it's time to work to the position of Chancellor. During this time, Plagueis continues his work with the midichlorians, furthering his scientific understanding of the force and works towards his goal of being able to manipulate life. The year is 42 BBY and Plagueis continues to create discontent and chaos in the outer rim through his business dealings in order to isolate them from the core worlds so the galaxy can move closer towards a civil war. He doesn't want Dooku in the position of Chancellor yet as he'll need him in the position to control the Republic when the time is right during their planned war. However, he noticed that Sheev Palpatine of Naboo is going to become a problem as his popularity rivals Dooku's and decides to have him killed. Plagueis organizes a group of Meladian assassins who infiltrate Palpatine's home one night. The Sith feels it through the force, multiple men rushing towards him. He collects his lightsaber and kills the assassins and uses the force to probe the mind of the last one and discovers that it was Hago Damask who ordered the assassination. Palpatine knows why he's attempted to assassinate him due to him competing with Dooku in the Senate, but he won't let this slide and goes to Hago Damask's apartment to get his revenge. He successfully sneaks in and makes his way to Damask's room. He breaks open the door and brings his blade above his head, ready to strike down. The Force wakes up Plagueis as he sees a figure wielding a crimson blade standing over him. Could this be Dooku he thinks and he wonders whether he's been betrayed by his apprentice. He uses the force to grab his blade and block the initial strike. 
He then force pushes Palpatine back across the room and jumps towards him and the two Sith lock blades. But as the light illuminates on both of their faces, Plagueis realizes that this is Palpatine, who himself is taken aback at the realization that they are both Sith Lords. They both lower their blades as they come to grip with the situation. For Palpatine, he didn't think there were any other Sith in the galaxy as all historic records showed their extinction 1000 years ago. On Plagueis' side, he thought his line of Sith, the Bane's lineage, was the only one. He wondered whether he was Tenebris' other apprentice, but this was unlikely. He asks Palpatine, who his master was, who tells Plagueis to explain first, and he has no shame in this. He tells Palpatine, his master was Darth Tenebris, 12th Sith Master in Darth Bane's lineage, and the true Dark Lord of the Sith in the galaxy. Palpatine goes next, explaining to Plagueis how he learned the ways of the Force from Darth Revan himself through a Sith holocron. Plagueis was shocked by this. He had heard about the mighty Sith Lord Revan's holocrons, but he thought they were all destroyed or lost. He tries to analyze Palpatine's power and determines he must be exceptionally strong if he was trained by a legendary Sith Lord. Plagueis asks Palpatine if he has an apprentice, who shakes his head, but doesn't need to ask Plagueis who his is, who guesses it's Dooku after he connected the dots. They decide what to do here and conclude that to ensure the victory for the Sith, they must work together. The Sith of old collapsed because of needless infighting for power and they almost went extinct a thousand years ago because of this. So they decided they would do better. Because if they join forces, the Sith victory is surely assured. However, to determine who the master is, they'll have a one-on-one -on -one duel. It takes place in the industrial region on Coruscant and they both stand across from each other, blades drawn. Their duel was intense and ferocious, their motivation high to best the other in combat. They both swing their blades with purpose and intense speed, amplified through the force. But Palpatine gains the upper hand in the duel and catches Plagueis with his Sith Lightning. He disarms the Mon and holds his blade at his throat, defeated. Plagueis was furious with his loss and couldn't believe how powerful Palpatine was. The knowledge and skills he learned from Revan had proved effective and now Plagueis was thrust back into the position of apprentice. But he accepted this. Plagueis believed the rule of two to be outdated so didn't fully see himself as the apprentice as technically they would be combining their plans. Plagueis tells Palpatine about his experiments with the midichlorians and they combine their power in Sith meditations and rituals to help further their understanding. Together they finally took Venomous's life, one of Plagueis' master Tenebris' other apprentices who Plagueis captured. Together they resurrect him and kill him again, repeating the process until his organs gave out. Both he and Sidious then enter a meditative state and manage to tip the scales of balance in the force in favor of the dark side. But they attempt to go one step further and attempted to create life by mentally reaching out to the inhabitants of the galaxy and act in direct violation of the nature of the force. They attempted to create a being of their own design, pouring malicious intent into waves through the force to the countless midichlorians spread across the galaxy. However, the experiment did not yield fruit as Plagueis has perceived the force growing quiet to his probing. Immediately afterwards, Plagueis' test subjects began to succumb to various diseases and he set most of the survivors free. Plagueis had developed a theory that the force was actively opposed to the Sith's efforts and he was right. After Plagueis and Palpatine attempted to create life with the midichlorians, the force fought back against their strength and birthed Anakin Skywalker to his mother Shmi on Tatooine with the power to destroy the Sith. Ten years pass by, and during this time, Plagueis shares his plans with Palpatine about the clone army, and they begin putting this in motion. In the Senate, Dooku has joined forces with Palpatine's faction, and they begin the Naboo crisis. They manipulate the Trade Federation into occupying Naboo, attempting to force Padme Amidala to sign their treaty, but Jedi Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are sent to protect her. They end up on Tatooine, where they discover Anakin Skywalker. The events of the Phantom Menace are carried out as normal, but the difference in this story is that Maul is never sent to Tatooine to track them down. But everything changed when Palpatine met with Qui-Gon and Padme returning to Coruscant from Tatooine. He was introduced to Anakin Skywalker, whom Qui-Gon deemed the Chosen One and was going to be tested by the Jedi Order. Palpatine quickly rushed to tell Plagueis, who felt compelled to meet Anakin. He went to see him at Palpatine's suite where he was staying, but just missed him and he began to feel fear 
that the Sith were in danger of being undone and holds himself responsible and interpreted Anakin's creation as the force striking back at him and Sidious and indeed they were right. Plagueis decides to watch Anakin as he leaves to go to Naboo but as he glimpses the boy he falls into a vision. He sees an older white male with a sharp sapphire blue blade emanating extreme power in the force. He can fly on command, block lightsabers with his bare hands and truly is the embodiment of the light side of the force. Plagueis is thrust back into reality and the vision confirms his fears that the boy would change the course of history in the galaxy. The Sith need the boy and the Jedi can't have him. Plagueis gets into panic mode but he knows that he has the ability to stop him but to do so might reveal the Sith to the Jedi. He mentions his plan to Palpatine and the risk that he might be exposed but Palpatine ultimately thinks it's time. With his chancellorship assured, it's time to show the Jedi that they've been here the entire time in the shadows. Plagueis goes to Naboo in a hood to hide his identity and this time, it isn't Maul who opens the door but Plagueis. Qui-Gon announces that this was their fight but it wouldn't go as he envisioned. Plagueis starts dueling the two Jedi and it's obvious they are outmatched. Plagueis finds an opening and pierces Qui-Gon's abdomen, killing the master. He looks upon the Padawan Obi-Wan and deems he isn't even worth his time and uses the force to disappear in front of his eyes using force speed and gets to Anakin's ship right before it takes off, captures the chosen one and takes him back to their fortress on Megiso. The next day, Palpatine is made Chancellor of the Republic and the Sith's victory is assured. For the next 10 years, Palpatine leads the Galactic Senate whilst in the shadows, works with Dooku to begin the Separatist movement and they begin the Separatist crisis with mass secession from the Republic, ultimately leading to their planned war. However during this time, Plagueis studies Anakin relentlessly and thinks his chosen one midichlorians might hold the missing piece to the puzzle that is cheating death. Palpatine originally wanted to train Anakin but Plagueis convinced him otherwise that had only become a potential threat. After the Sith returned, the Jedi were frightened, especially after Obi-Wan described the being he faced on Naboo and the immense power he possessed. They believed the Sith went extinct a thousand years ago but they were heavily mistaken. They attempted to hunt down the Sith to find them and expose their dealings but all of this is for naught as the Sith have been able to hide for a thousand years without being found. After eight long years of study, Plagueis finally found the key to what he's been looking for. The secret to not only controlling but commanding the midichlorians in one south. With Anakin's midichlorians, he learned how to revert them back to essentially de-age them and through this, learn the power of immortality. He teaches this to Palpatine and Dooku and together they all achieve this. They give the galaxy two more years for conflict to foster before they begin the clone war. The war went exactly how they predicted and turned the people of the galaxy against the elites and the Republic Senate but also the Jedi who were now visioned as the enemies of peace rather than the defenders. The Republic was losing the war and losing badly. Close to the end of the war, Palpatine appointed Plagueis or Hago Damas to the public as co-chancellor and now the Sith were in full control. When the time was right, they executed Order 66 and the three Sith on Coruscant purged the Jedi Temple. Plagueis defeated Obi-Wan Kenobi and his Togruta apprentice and the Jedi recognized Plagueis as the man who spared his life and killed his master years ago. Through controlling the Clone War, they engineered it so key members of the Jedi Council were off Coruscant to ensure they would not pose a threat. They declared a state of emergency in the Senate but used the chaos to announce that the Republic will be converted into the first galactic empire. They have the leaders of the Separatists killed and take over their worlds to ensure they're under their control. It will take time but eventually, all Jedi are hunted down to extinction and they successfully establish their empire with little to no resistance. Together the three Sith, Palpatine, Plagueis and Dooku rule together with the shared power of immortality and the potential to rule forever. Years after the empire was established, Palpatine travels to Droman Kass where his master Revan was killed. He owed his master everything for teaching him the ways of the Sith and traveled to his grave. Using the power of immortality, he attempts to revive his master through his understanding of the midichlorians and the force's connection to life. His gravestone cracks but it wasn't Palpatine who did this. It turns to dust in an instant and Palpatine covers his face and through the dust he can see a purple illumination and through it walks Darth Revan, alive after 3000 years.
Master Revan. The resurrection worked. You have succeeded, my apprentice. The galaxy is now ours. If you enjoyed this video, you have to watch What If Palpatine Was A Jedi? Or What If Darth Plagueis Killed Darth Sidious? Please subscribe if you're enjoying the video and make sure to like and comment. I love replying to all your comments. Leave your video ideas below and may the force be with you.